Hi, I'm Daryl Plummer, and welcome to Top of Mind. You know, back in January, one of my favorite lines was to say that 2024 would be the year of the generative AI agent. Well, it seems the year is sort of playing out exactly as we foresaw, because now it seems everybody's got an AI agent. They're popping up everywhere. They're kind of like insects in the middle of the night and you turn on the light and they scatter. There's so many of them and people don't know what to do with them. The problem with this is although the product is beginning to hit the street, they're not very differentiated. So everybody's agents look a bit like everybody else's. The second problem is that the customers don't know what to do with them. Tech providers are great at telling us what we can do and horrible at telling us what we should do. And the third problem, well, when you consider it, what should we do? The idea of being able to use agents to actually solve real problems for us is one that's still evolving in the heads of most people. So what is a software agent? Well, first off, we pretty much understand what conversational agents are, right? When we look at conversational agents, you talk to some you know, software system and it will send something off to do a task for you, maybe transfer uh, you know, money or, or pull up a document or something for you or do a search. We all know that, but those are simply trends actional agents they you know, will perform a transaction but it doesn't do a whole lot more sophisticated than that most people aren't aware that agents can do things that are long running they can actually have memory they can actually have state and they can stay around and do very complicated processes for us but because we're not really familiar with what we do with such a capability it's very difficult to tell the providers exactly what we're willing to pay for As I said, it's very difficult to know what you should do with an agent. And I also said most people even really know what agents are. So in simple terms, an agent is a, is a uh, piece of software uh, that will execute tasks for you. That's the simplest way I could put that, really. It's the type of software is going to be able to execute simple tasks. It might be transactional, or it might be able to do things that are more complex, where it actually talks to other systems, maybe other agents even, to get the job done. When you have these systems of agents or multi-agent systems, you begin in some very interesting scenarios where agents can do things that human beings might never even consider to do. So for example, what if you wanted to buy a house? One of the things that you actually have to do to buy a house is you have to figure out what kind of house you want, where you want it to be, what price you want to spend, who's going to be your lender, where you're going to get your insurance from it, and it goes on and on and on, right? It's a lot of stuff. You got to engage an agent. You got to engage that lending institution. You got to engage in so many things. But what if you had a generative AI software agent that was doing that all the time, that was always tracking house prices in, in different areas? So you can say, hey, look at my area. What are the house, house prices that are tracking what kind of houses are on the market? And you could even have it say, all right, I'll show you what kind of floor plans you might like. So maybe you get a napkin and you scribble on a napkin a floor plan that you like of a house, you show it to the AI agent, and it goes and shows you houses that have floor plans that approximate what your plan might look like. But not only that, it goes forward and it starts to ask lenders what kind of lending rates do they have? What kind of debt to equity ratios uh, you know, are you going to have to have to get qualified for this kind of thing? And, and connect you to the insurance companies that are the right ones to understand the tax situation. You see where I'm going. These agents could actually be out there doing things you know, across different systems, across different data, and providing you with the information you need and the process to make something done in the easiest fashion possible. Now, we would love to see this, but the problem is most providers are not yet that ambitious with their AI agent strategies. They're just doing conversational agents. They've got to be more ambitious. They've got to begin to start looking at this as a truly a $5 billion plus business that's gonna grow compounded about 40% over the next few years. They gotta get serious about these kinds of processes. Oh, and by the way, if you've been in the game for a little while, you probably might think this sounds a little bit like business process management, where we had to do workflow, we had to do orchestration, we have to do routing, we have to do rules management, and all these complex processes being managed. Well, in effect, it will be. We have to understand all that. The difficulty lies in integrating the data, being able to use existing rules and policies and guardrails that you have without having to start them all over again just because you're doing agents. Well, these are the problems that tech providers have to solve. And if they don't, the end users can't get the value from an agent. So the next time you see an agent demonstration where they're just showing you a shopping bot that takes a picture of something you want to buy and it goes and finds those, those items on, online and shows them to you, 
You say, give me more. I don't want to just know if the items are there. I want to know how fast it'll, it'll, uh, I can get. I want to know, is there a better way to get a lower price? I want to know if, in fact, this kind of outfit would be a good fit for me. So these kind of ambitions are ones that will take agents to the next level. And as we do that, we'll find that that 2024 year has really become very interesting for us. The thing with agents is that they're very cool when they're doing the right things. The other side of it is again, this notion that there are difficulties in implementing these things. Integration is always going to be a problem. You got latency between agents. How much time does it take for one agent to send a request across an API to another agent that does a function call to some e-commerce system or some backend system? These are kind of things that have to be solved and will be solved. But there's a notion that's beginning to rise that's a very important one. And that's what a notion of what I call guardian agents. These are agents overseeing other agents. You know, it would, people think human in the loop is a great idea, right? AI, oh, we got a human in the backstop the AI. And it is a good idea. Problem is, there ain't enough of us. Human in the loop will get overrun by AI because their AI proliferates so fast. There'll be so many agents, so many AI solutions out there that there are not enough humans expertise to actually track all that stuff. So when you talk about human in the loop, you have to start preparing yourself for the fact that agents are going to have to watch out for other agents. They're going to have to validate and, ver and verify what those agents are doing. We call those guardian agents. A guardian agent is a big deal because you could have an agent get hijacked by someone else. Like, let's say you got an agent and you're in a bank and it helps transfer uh, money from account to account. Well, what if I co-opted that agent to actually put every penny of overage uh, in a transaction into my account? Nobody's going to notice a penny lost here, a penny lost there. But over time, it amounts to a lot of money. But if you have a guardian agent that's watching out for something like that, you can get alerted to it. And narrow down the number of alerts you get to the things that a human being really has to make a decision about. So guardian agents are rising out of security. They're rising out of, of large language model orchestration and routing. They're rising out of this notion that we want these long-running, autonomous, goal-seeking agents that have agency. Oh, there's an interesting term agency. It's like they have responsibility. They know what they're trying to do. And if someone co-ops that agency, they can actually abuse the agents and do bad things with them. So we got to get the right security for agents. We got to have AI oversee AI. Now, when we do this well, we get into a land that actually kind of begins to settle out for us. Because in the end, what we're going to see is we're going to see agents doing a lot of the work that human beings would have done. I've been a developer most of my life, but I would say about 80% of the stuff that I did as a developer, I didn't really need to do. I only did because there was nothing else that I could use to get it done. Now the agent can go and do my bills. The agent can check my software, can do bug checks. The agent can do all this work for me where I don't have to do it. It's not just about writing code for me. It's about doing everything that surrounds delivering an outcome to a customer. So you can see why I get excited about agents. There's a lot of stuff that they could do. And if we do it right, it's going to be very, very powerful. But warning, there is a possibility that agents will disappear. And I don't think it's likely, but agents as a concept have come and gone over the years. We've had agents, I remember in the old Unix days, I was dealing with Unix systems. We had demons, which essentially were agents, background, background processes running to do things we wanted them to do. Then we have, you know, fourth generation systems and we have, you know, um, you know remote processes that are running that we, we've sort of called agents throughout the years, but they came and went. And now we have an opportunity for agents to rise to their proper level of value for an enterprise or for a provider of technology. And that's when the agents actually are trustworthy and they're actually consistent in delivering what human beings need and what human beings should not do. So in the end, we have to ask ourselves, are your tech providers offering you agents that can do things or offer you agents that tell you what you should do. Give me the example, give me the use case, give me the industry, give me the specific solution that is going to solve the problem that I have. If they can do that, they can tap into the money because right now tapping into the value of AI systems is a hit or miss proposition and getting people to pay more money for it, it's not happening that well. So agents could be a pathway to getting the money and a pathway to your success and growth with AI. If you feel all this AI ambition sounds difficult, 
I say, so what? If it were easy, everyone would do it. Agents must do things that could not be easily done with an app or a pre-planned process, or they'll fail to capture customer imagination. They will fail to compel customers to pay for them. They'll fail to catch on as anything but another feature of AI. And I, for one, am getting tired of new features without a transformative purpose. So here's your opportunity. Show me the ambitious AI agent. Show me the ambitious AI agent outcomes. Show me an ambitious, long-running, autonomous AI agent that wakes people up. You do that, and I'll show you the mud. You want to talk more about this before everyone else has figured it out? Give us a call, and be sure to tune in to the next Top of Mind. And in the meantime, follow these links below for more information.